thanks for joining me. I'd like to begin by asking a question we like to ask a lot of people. How do you define social media? Hi, Rebecca. Um, I define social media as um, a collection of internet-based tools, essentially, that enable people to converse online, share online, and interact online. Um, it's, it's all these innovative technologies that actually enable people to collaborate in, in the virtual space. Do you think there are enough innovative digital campaigns emerging, or do you think there are too many Me Too ideas? Um, I think pharma companies in Europe are struggling to understand how to utilise social media. Um, I don't think that applies just to pharma. I think that applies to a lot of industries. That um, Talking to pharma colleagues and to both colleagues within the banking sectors, they're all struggling to see how they can use this type of technology, um, especially around products. But you can use the technologies for different uh, for different things, i.e., services or service improvement or customer engagement. But I think, as a whole, many industries are struggling to utilise social. A few companies are making brave steps and trying out new things, um, but time will tell to see if they are the right things to do. How do you see digital changing the way that pharma operates? I think the way that pharma will change and operate and um, especially when you look at people like healthcare professionals and the, the nature of information and the types of information they have access to and um, and also with the patient the empowered patient looking for information people have now got more opportunity to grab information when they want it when they need it and how they want it um, i think this change is something that the industry is struggling um, to embrace. I think some companies are being braver in this way. Um, but again, you know, a lot of companies who've often had control are now losing control. Um, and it, it's interesting because I, I've, I've been with other people within the farm industry where we've seen both ends of the spectrum. Those people who are willing to embrace this lack of control and then others who are fearing losing control of the information. But more importantly, I think we've all we've lost control, and farms just got to deal with that. To be quite honest, what online strategies and campaigns have you noted that have been, in your opinion, a success? Campaigns that I've noted to be a success. I mean, it's difficult to answer that because they all have different um, attributes. Um, I mean, I I go. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to answer that one, to be quite honest, Rebecca, because they all have different attributes and it's it's really, it really comes down to the nature of the activity. Um, and it's very difficult to, without seeing companies actually put numbers against these projects to actually see the effectiveness, it's really difficult to say what is a great success. I think, there's been, I think there have been some companies who have taken some brave steps and utilised some new technologies i.e. gaming to try and drive awareness or, or for disease awareness and for engagement with patients i think a lot of the activities with healthcare professionals they're very varied we've seen apps come on the scene we've seen a lot of um e-detailing is still very strong video detailing is uh taking off more um but time will tell to see what is a really effective channel for engagement and off the back of that then, how would you define success within social media campaigns? Well, I think one thing that we've got to move away from is, is the word campaign, because campaigns are something that we run in pharma, um, and we, we run them on a cycle basis. I think when you're looking at social media, you've got to look at engagement. You can't run a campaign because people want access to information 24-7. They want it when they want it, how they want it. And... If we think campaigns are still going to be effective, I think we're, we're mistaken. I think we've got to look at how we can support and engage with people, especially utilising these technologies for the information when they want it and how they want it. Now, social media is by definition global. What differences have you noted when executing campaigns to a global market compared with a local market? I think when we look at campaigns um, or activities on social media where we have an awkward geographical boundary, i.e. there is no boundary. We look at Facebook and it reaches everywhere, as does Twitter. 
I think it's I think it's very difficult for people to work out the true extent of the reach of their programs. So a program for us in the UK can be picked up in the US quite easily. And we just need to be aware of trying to define our remit with our customers to say, you know, these programs are for our UK audiences. But we've also got to, be, got to be aware that they will reach into other markets. And that makes social media quite challenging for not just pharma, but for everyone again, um, when we don't operate on that, on that scale. Do you think enough is being done to maximise internal communications with the use of social media? I think, I think there's a lot of companies having those internal discussions around social media and trying to look at how they can use these channels. Um, you know, customers are in, in this space, whether it's healthcare professional or the member of the public, they're having conversations around medicines, around treatments, around um, treatment pathways. These are all actually happening now. But I think it requires a bit of education internally as well to actually say to management teams and to brand managers is to say, you know, these conversations are happening. How would we operate in this space if we were to go there? Um, and I think one of the toughest parts is actually, I don't think businesses are engineered for social media, yet, especially in pharma. We're not set up for that type of engagement. Um, some of the programs I've been looking at, it takes quite a bit of work to to create the engagement to say, actually, we need to put resource behind this. Um, and it makes it a bit of a challenge because you know, we, n we don't have community managers. We don't have um, a lot of social media uh, teams in pharma. I don't know of any pharma company who's got a, a community manager. So it's about restructuring internally and getting the companies, getting the, the management buy-in before you can go into these spaces. How do you identify opportunities to reach customers using social media? I look at it slightly differently. I th I'm trying to look at it from a, a, the direction of what customers want from us. So rather than us saying, you know, how are we going to use social media to reach customers, actually, how would customers like to engage with us as a company? Um, it's more difficult if we're trying to bust into their space and tell them how to interact with us that's not going to work we've got to look at how they want to converse with us whether it's over the telephone via paper via social media via all the channels because i think a lot of people get hung up on social media is the sexy word at the moment but actually a lot of people just still want to pick up the phone and have a conversation and um, you know you've got other approaches you can use you can use live chat so that's another opportunity to be online to have a real-time conversation one-to-one -one rather than having your conversation out in the open. And some people don't want that conversation out in the open. So I think it's about using the right channels with the right people, but it's having an understanding of your customer's need and their expectations of you as an organisation. Finally, pharma is a regulated industry and a balance needs to be struck between working within company regulations and innovation. Do you think that pharma has that balance right? I think, I think a lot of companies have they're realizing that the old model is broken that we're seeing the the representative model is being challenged more and more it's not to say digital will replace the representative there will always be the need for the representative i think the role will evolve with the representative but the innovations from digital should be around how those conversations that happen online translate into a dialogue whether it's on in social media whether it's web whether it's with a representative I think those innovations are coming I think we're seeing companies make um, the right steps we've introduced live chat at GSK to allow our customers to converse with us over the web in so when they're on our website they can still talk to us via the web rather than then jump through a hoop to actually converse with us so the innovations are coming I think it's it's taking brave companies to move into spaces where they've not been before, but it's what our customers expect from us, so that's what we should be doing. Thank you very much for your time. No problem, Rebecca. PharmaForum.com 
is the dynamic online information and discussion portal for the pharmaceutical industry.